It's always good to visit old friends. But I didn't know this meeting would lead to such a calamity. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, please, Miss Wong, I must not stop. Mr. Paladin waiting for a new suitcase. Oh, my, very nice. Oh, such beautiful oh, leather. M- must oh. hurry, Miss Wong. Mr. Paladin be very angry. Excuse, please. Hey, boy. Why you take so much time to buy suitcase? You gone three hours now. Oh, big mess. Omnibus breakdown. Wheel fall off. Frightened horses. Holy ma, big mess. Hey, boy has to walk all the way from Montgomery Street. Oh, poor hey, boy. But you must not worry for Mr. Paladin. He will not be angry. Oh, Missy Wong, you wrong. Oh, no. Yes, sir. He needs suitcase for trip to Colorado and very little time left to pack before he catch his day. But, hey, boy, Mr. Paladin... Please, he... Missy Wong, you slow me down. No time to talk. Okay. Okay. Mr. Paladin! Mr. Paladin, he's hey boy. Oh, oh holy moly. Hey, boy. Yes? Missy Wong tries to tell you. Oh, Mr. Paladin already leave? Yes, sir. Can't wait. He very angry with hey boy? No, he still like old suitcase. He use it. It okay. Oh, me. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently. Overnight. Traveling from San Francisco to Colorado Territory, a passenger has his choice of being transported in a cloud of stagecoach dust or in a funnel of railroad cinders. On my trip to Pueblo, I had more than a fair share of both. But once I arrived... The uncomfortable miles were easy to forget. The job was simple, the money was good. And after leaving a satisfied client, I leisurely straddled a rented horse and started the second phase of my Colorado journey. This was the part I had really looked forward to. A ride north alongside the Arkansas River all the way to Oro City for a visit with my old friends, Ollie and Cora Beardsley. Ooh, da- ah. yeah. Well, I'll... Cora! Cora Beardsley, wait, wait up! Paladin? Cora! Is that you, Paladin? It sure is. For heaven's sake, Cora. of all people, oh, I can't hardly believe it. It's my been a eyes. long time, Oh, it sure Cora. has, my You haven't oh. changed a bit. In fact, I think you oh. look even younger than you did four years and ago. And you ain't changed either. What brings you to Aura City? You and Ollie. Oh. I had business in Pueblo, so I decided to take some time off and come up to see how you've been getting along. Oh. I was just going to check in that hotel when I saw I you. I just can't get over it. It's so well. good to see you. Oh, here now, Cora, there's no cause for you to shed tears. Forgive me, but it's like having your prayers answered. 
all the years we've known you, somehow you always show up when we need you most. There's something wrong? Yes, there is. What? Well, it's Ollie. Ollie? He's a different man since you was here last. I don't know what's got into him, but he's managed to get himself into a whole pack of trouble. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Cora. Listen, I know you don't want to stand out here on the boardwalk and tell me about it. Why don't I drive you out to the ranch and we can talk on the way? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I think it might be better if Ollie tells you himself. He's right down the street. I was just on my way. Why don't you come with me? Or, or maybe you'd best check in the hotel first. No, I can do that later. Come on. Lots of things are different since you was here, Paladin. We don't live on the ranch anymore. Oh? Did you sell? Yes, it was too much work for Ollie, and it wasn't paying for itself. We bought a little house on the edge of town. I've been taking in sewing, and it pays right well. <laughs> you always were one to keep busy. Now, how does Ollie take to living in town? Well, the way I figure it, that's what started all his troubles. Uh, this is where we stop. Uh, Here? The sheriff's office? That's right. You mean... You mean Ollie is in jail? That's right. It used to shame me to go through this door, but... Well, I think I'm getting used to it now. How long has he been here? Sixteen days today. Cora. Oh, he'll be glad to see you. Maybe you can talk some sense into him. Let's go in. Oh, afternoon, Cora. Afternoon, Jim. I want you to meet a friend of ours... Mr. Paladin, this is Sheriff Moody. Glad to know you, Sheriff. He's come all the way from San Francisco to pay us a visit. Well, I knew I'd never seen you around before. No, the last time I was in Aura City, you had a different sheriff. Jim's been here two years now. Uh, here, I'll uh, get the keys. Alice, you're going to be surprised, Paladin. Well, I'm anxious to find out what he's been up to. Hey, you got special company today, Ollie. Well, hey, Ollie, you old rascal. Hey, when'd you get into town? Just now. Come on, let him in, Jim. I want to shake his hand good. All right, give me a chance. Ollie, I think you and Paladin ought to visit alone. I'm going back to the house, if you don't mind. Sure, Cora, that's fine. Come on, get in here, Paladin. Let me get a close look at you. Well... Ollie, you're the last person I ever expected to see in jail. <laughs> Ain't it something, no? Ollie. <laughs> yes, Cora? You want me to bring you a hot supper tonight? Oh, heavens, no. Don't be going to all that bother. The food here is good enough for any man. All right. A paladin, why don't you come by the house and have supper with me? I'd be happy to, Cora. Thank uh, you. I'll be looking for you. Well, goodbye. Bye. I'll uh, see you to the door, Cora. Uh, just yell when you're ready to leave, Mr. Paladin. All right, Sheriff, I will. Goodbye, Thank you. Ollie. Come on, sit down, Paladin. See what a good, comfortable bunk they got in this jail. All right. You're the host, and an unusually happy one under the circumstances. What's, what's this all about, Ollie? Is this some kind of joke? Oh, no, it ain't no joke at all, no. I had a big trial and everything. Judge found me guilty and sentenced me to 20 days in jail. Guilty of what? Well, he said to me, Miss, uh, Miss Dean, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, what he meant was that I shouldn't have raced my old spring wagon down the middle of the street and rammed it into the side of the stagecoach. But that last part was accident. I sure didn't intend to do that. <laughs> what in the world were you doing racing your wagon down the middle of the street? Well, I don't remember exactly why I decided to do it, but most people have been saying I had a little too much to drink. And what do you say? Well, I guess they're pretty close to right. Well, what's happened to you, Ollie, getting drunk and racing wagons? Well, Pilot, and I know it ain't exactly what you call upstanding, but I didn't mean no harm. I didn't know I was going to hit the stagecoach. Besides, nobody got hurt. I think your pride must have been a little hurt being locked up in jail like this. Oh, no, I don't mind it a bit. I figured I had it coming. The judge said so anyway. Oh, I sort of like it here. You like it? Ollie, you're not making any sense at all. Well, it's hard for you to understand, Pilot, and you're still young. But when you get to be my age, you do a lot of remembering. About all I can remember is a mountain of hard work and one big black patch of sorrow when we lost our boy. Well, sir, after a while you get stuffed up with them memories. So you go out and you do things you never thought you would do. Make new memories. And this time, happy ones. So I'm happy to be in jail. And do you know what? No, what? You see that fellow over there in the other cell sleeping? Yeah, I noticed him when I came in. Well, we're just lucky he's taking a nap or we wouldn't be able to hear ourselves talk. He complains every minute he's awake, but that ain't the point. Can you guess who he is? No. That's Rad Tolan. You mean one of the Tolan brothers? You guessed it. They're about the meanest two brothers alive. Out-and-out -out killers. I know. 
There's a $5,000 reward over their heads. Yeah, but nobody gets the reward unless you catch the both of them. The sheriff caught Rad down at the saloon just yesterday. Huh? No, I'll tell you, that Sheriff Jim, he's a good lawman. He can outfox anybody. You should hear Rad cussing him out. Says his brother's going to come and get him out of here, and the first thing they're going to do is blow Jim's head off. Yeah, just the boys who would do it if they had the chance. Hey, just imagine me, Ollie Beardsley, locked up in the cell next to one of the Tolan brothers. Ain't that something? Well, I, I, I don't know, Ollie. Oh, my, don't you see, Paladin? I've never been in the cell before in my whole life. I'll be out in four days, and then I'll have something new to remember. All right. Uh, what then? When does this fling end, Ollie? Man, I don't know. You don't think much about the future when you're my age. Do you think much about Cora? Oh, sure, but Cora can take care of herself good enough. We've been married 35 years, and she don't lean on me for nothing, nothing at all. She might look weak and puny, but she's healthy as an ox. I never worry about Cora, and I'm pretty sure she never worries about me. I wonder. I baked that pie just for you, Paladin, and you hardly put a dent in oh, it. Oh, it's delicious, Cora, but it'd be a waste to force it down. I'm afraid I just overindulged before I got to the pie. It'll just go to waste anyway. We can take some down to Ollie. He'll enjoy it. I don't know whether he would or not. He's been so unpredictable these past months. I never know what to expect. Nothing I do seems to please him. Oh, well, he'll get over it. It's just a phase. Something he has to get out of his system. That could be. Uh, I'll see. Oh, I was looking for Mrs. Beardsley. Is she here? Yes, she is. Come in. Miss Beardsley. Janet Brogan. What's the matter, child? My papa sent me over here, and he said not to get you upset and to be careful how I tell you what happened. Oh, it's just awful, Miss Beardsley. Just tell awful. Tell me what? Well... I just don't know which to tell you first. Well, now, take it easy, Janet, and try to start from the beginning. Who's he? Well, uh, never mind. Please tell us what happened. Well, sir, Sheriff Jim's been shot, and oh. they don't expect him to live. Oh, no. Who shot him? Them Tolan brothers. Oh. The one that was loose, the one that wasn't in jail, my papa said, came right in the front door of the sheriff's office and shot Sheriff Jim and took the keys and let his brother loose, and they run oh. out of town and got away. Oh. Did anybody trail them? Oh, my papa's getting a posse together right now. Then they're going to catch him. But that ain't the worst part, Miss Beardsley. Your husband went with them, Tolan Brothers. What? what? Yes, ma'am. They broke Mr. Beardsley loose, too, and my papa says they forced him to go with them. <laughs> A wholesome foursome of listening treats. CBS Radio's Happy Habit Gang are yours for the fun of it every Monday through Friday. They are, of course, Arthur Godfrey, Art Linkletter's House Party, Gary Moore, and the sparkling combination of Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney. You can't beat them, so why not join them? Every and any Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right here on this station of CBS Radio. Arthur, Art, Gary, Bing, and Rosie. Every weekday yet. And every Sunday, you have a fine opportunity to explore with experts the background of the week's important news. CBS Newsman Edward R. Murrow calls into electronic conference CBS Newsmen around the globe, the men who've seen the important news break firsthand. Together in an effective worldwide conference call, Mr. Murrow and his fellow CBS Newsmen weigh the facts and their perspectives in history. Background is the name of this important program. It's on this station, Sundays. Cora Beardsley accepted the news of Ollie's predicament with expected anguish, excused herself, and retired to her room. Knowing that I could be of more help elsewhere, I left the house and joined Janet Brogan's Papa's Posse. We tried to trail the Tolan brothers and Ollie, but the darkness made it impossible. Before dawn, we gave up and made our way back to Oro City. Later that day, I learned that Sheriff Jim Moody was not going to die after all. But he was, in fact, back at work in his office. Hello, Mr. Paladin. Come in. Sheriff, how do you feel? Well, my uh, head's a little cloudy yet, but otherwise all right, I guess. Well, sit down. Thank you. 
No serious damage then, huh? Well, the bullet grazed my forehead, but that didn't do as much harm as the fall I took. Uh, the doctor said it was just a slight concussion. Uh, said it'd clear up in a couple of days. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, did uh, Mr. Brogan fill you in on our wasted efforts last night? Yeah, he did. It's terrible to think what they might do to old Ollie. Now, why do you think they'd go to the trouble of taking him with them? Probably to use him for cover if they got cornered. Of course. That's why I was glad we didn't track them down last night. I think they'll turn him loose in a few days. He'll be all right. I hope you're right for Cora's sake. How's she holding up? Pretty well. I was by there a while ago. Then you think we ought to wait a few days to see if Ollie comes back before we go after him? Yeah. Helen. Huh? What? Look outside. Mr. Those riders pulling up. What? That's Ollie. Yeah, and the Tolan brothers. Here, you better grab one of these rifles. I may need your help. Yeah, it looks like they're coming in. Well, you stand back at the door. I'll cover this side. Okay. All right. Get on in. This is the end of the road. Ollie. Hello, Paladin. Ollie, are you all right? Well, if I wasn't, I wouldn't be holding this gun on their backs, would I? All right, keep moving. You know where the sails are. Go on, go on. All right. Paladin. I can't believe it. Well, neither can I, but... Let's give him a hand, just in case we're wrong. But, Paladin, I still think we could have stopped by the saloon first. I deserve one little drink at least. You will get your drink after you talk to Cora. Oh, she wouldn't care. Now, Ollie... Hey, what you knocking for? This is my house. Go on in. Hey, Corey! Corey! What? That you, Ollie? Ollie, why, it is you. I couldn't believe my ears. And here you are, all in one piece. Oh, Ollie. Oh, I... Now, Corey, stop it. Oh. You don't have to carry on like this in front of Mr. Paladin. Well, what happened to you last night? I've been worried sick. Now, you ought to know better than to worry about me after 35 years. I'm man enough to take care of myself. Miss Ollie, you was with them Tolin brothers, them... Them killers. Oh, they're just human people like you and me. Ain't you going to tell me what happened? Well, I'm a, uh, Paladin, why don't you tell her for me? I, I think you ought to, Ollie. I'd, um, I'd like to hear it again myself. All right. Now, Corey, you've got to dry them tears off your face. Oh, well, sure, Ollie. Well, why don't you sit down on the sofa? Uh, Paladin, you can sit in this chair. It's most comfortable. Thank you, Corey. <coughs> Corey, you got any brandy in the house? No, but I'll fix you some coffee. Would you like that? (laughs) No, 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 don't bother. Go ahead, Ollie. Tell Cora what happened. Well, first off, you ought to know that I won't be going back to jail. Jim suspended my sentence because I brought in them there tolling rather single-handed. You did? Why, how'd you ever do that? It wasn't easy. They took me to an old line cabin about ten miles out last night. We was going to stay there until morning and then go on to somewhere else. But I fooled them. Whilst they was asleep, I got untied, took their guns away from them, tied their hands behind their back, and made them ride back here to jail. Oh, good heavens. Ollie, I can hardly believe you did all that. I don't know why you can't believe it. The men are locked up, Cora. I was right there when he brought them in, and just like you said, their hands were tied behind them, and he had them covered with one of their own six guns. But the Tolan brothers. My Ollie against those killers. And there's a $5,000 reward for those men. $5,000? You mean Ollie will get $5,000? That's right. Now, oh. I, now, I, I don't know, Pallet, and I might not get the full amount. Uh, there's uh, no reason why you shouldn't, is there? Well, I, I reckon not. Ollie Beardsley, I am so proud of you. Why, you're going to be like a hero in this town. Now, don't get so all fired excited. Oh, I think I've got a right to. Well, I, I'm not so sure. What's the matter, Ollie? Don't you think you deserve to be a hero? Ollie, there's something wrong, ain't there? There's something more you ain't told us. Well, yes, there is. No, you always could see right through me, Corey. What is it, Ollie? Well, I just knew it. I couldn't go on with it. But the trouble is, if I don't go through with it, I'll be in a real mess. Go through with what? And the truth of the matter is, them Tolan brothers forced me to bring him back to jail. They made up that story for me to tell everybody. Why'd they want to go to jail? Well, they're pretty slick schemers and mean, too. Just as mean as everybody thinks they are. 
They got this all planned out, and if I don't go through with it, they're going to kill me and Corey, too, and they'll do it. Well, they won't do no killing locked up in jail. No, they'll get out. They got all kinds of schemes to get out if I don't do what they told me to do. What was that? Well, sir, I was supposed to wait until I collect the 5000 reward money, and then I got to find some way to get them out of jail and then turn the money over to them. They promised to give me $500 of it if I do it, and if I don't, then Cora and me will be dead. Oh. Ollie, well, you sure got yourself into a pack of trouble this time. But I didn't do it. I was forced into it. Can't you see that? If you hadn't got drunk and raced that wagon down the street in the first place, you wouldn't be in this mess. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This can't be as bad as it sounds. After all, the Tolans are locked up. All we have to do is to see that they stay there until they're hanged. And I'd feel a mite better if they were hanged. Come on, Ollie, let's get down and tell the sheriff. We'll get some townsmen to stand guard duty on those men 24 hours a day. And uh, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll stay in Oro City until the Tolan brothers are buried. And I sure would be grateful if you did, Paladin. They ought to hang them today if they can. Well, they'll have to have a trial first, Cora, but I'm sure we all know what the verdict will be. Uh, I'll stay, but only on one condition. What's that? That you will promise never to get drunk again and race that wagon down the street. Oh, I promise that. Never again. And I believe you, Ollie. I think you've accumulated enough new memories now to last quite a few years. You're sure right about that. Come on, we better go. Paladin. Yes? I just wanted you to know. I'm awfully glad you decided to pay us a visit when you did. I am too, Cora. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and debonair, be sociable, have a Pepsi. When you're out for fun, there's nothing like carting along an extra carton or two of light, refreshing Pepsi-Cola. You can enjoy all you want of Pepsi's lively taste and sparkle, because Pepsi refreshes without filling. So travel light with light, refreshing Pepsi wherever you go, and whatever you do, buy an extra carton. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Ann Whitfield, Russell Arms, and Ralph Moody. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.